Hi everyone, Vandy here from Greenfire Games. Today we have a special unboxing for you. I was fortunate enough yesterday to receive, unbeknownst to me, my copy of Ghostbusters 2, the board game, the deluxe edition. You've been waiting on this for a little while, right? Actually, I completely forgot. Uh, mostly because I got so caught up once I finally got Rum and Bones mm. and uh, the new Cthulhu Wars expansions, mm -hmm. along with Dark Souls. This one was kind of one I was like, oh, it'll get here when it gets here. So this was kind of a really cool surprise, because I just once again got a box, and I was like, oh, what's in here? And then sure enough, I looked at it, I was like, oh, Cryptozoic, and I'm like, it can't be. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I enjoy, I'm a big Ghostbusters fanatic. Uh, not going to say anything about the new movie, though. <laughs> Let's avoid that quagmire while we can. But uh, I really am excited about this one, because I'm a very firm defender of Ghostbusters 2. I don't think it's as bad as everyone likes to make it out to be. I, I, I love it. Both movies, I watch them back to back every Halloween. It's like, I have to. I can't watch one without the other. So uh, I'm really excited that this one, when I saw that they were bringing in more of uh, all the stuff from Ghostbusters 2, uh, Vigo, the Carpathian. Mm -hmm. Vigo is going to be... Um, the, is Janusz in this? That's what I'm really excited to find out. Janusz better be in this. Otherwise, that, I mean, you got Walter Peck in the first one. As a okay. Kickstarter exclusive, wow. okay. if I don't see now, granted, I will say this: um, I did not receive all of the expansions because I also did get the um, real Ghostbusters pack because mm. I that's like one of my all-time favorite cartoons. It's on Netflix, by the way, for anyone who ever wants to oh, like check it out. But uh, yeah, I got the animated what? Ghostbusters. Uh, so <laughs> let's get this going. You couldn't tell though. Yes, I love Ghostbusters, so I'm very excited. I thought the first game was pretty fun. Ooh. Uh, funny fact, I actually got to meet the artist for the Ghostbusters comic. His name was, uh, his name's, uh, Dan Shining, Shoning. Um, I met him on DeviantArt before he even became a big name. Super nice guy. And I, you know, I always, he always drew Ghostbusters fan art. And I was always like, man, this guy should do a Ghostbusters comic book. Oh, a little further back. Oh, sorry. This guy, and it's just kind of crazy to see that he's doing the on-running Ghostbusters comic book, which is also great, by the way. So it's... These are the tiles. Looks like they're keeping in. Yep, one of the new concepts in this game is going to be the slime, which I think is going to add a very uh, nice wrinkle to the game mechanics. At least a different kind of slime than in the first game. Well, yeah, because in the first game, sliming was more so like, oh, you got slime, so you lose. You have to take a turn to get rid of it. And this one, yep. it's the mood slime from Ghostbusters 2. Yep. So, because uh, one of the bigger concepts now, from well, Ed, <laughs> all right, as expected. Lots of uh, fun-looking miniatures. I like the color schemes on these. Because uh, one of the new concepts, as I was saying in this game, is um, you have characters wielding proton packs, but you also have characters wielding slime blowers. Certain ghosts can only be dealt with with the slime blower. So I think that's going to add a fun little change, because uh, you have to actually kind of do some strategy. Because that was one of the big complaints I kind of had about the first game was... It was great. Anytime I got to actually play it, I loved it. As a Ghostbusters fanat fanatic, it was really cool to have all those characters and all those pieces. But, I don't know, the game didn't have any staying power to me. So, let's see. I do love it in the first game, though. You did have... Oh, okay. Wow, well, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Start with that of uh, one of my favorite scenes in any Ghostbusters movie or any sort of movie in general. You get the Statue of Liberty. Let me back. Here, let's raise that camera a bit so you can take this in. Uh, it is highly recommended you listen to Jackie Wilson or Howard Huntsbury if you want to go with the actual version they use in the movie. Because mm -hmm. you can actually place your Ghostbusters up on top and ride them into battle. That is outstanding. The, this, uh, and it even has speakers on it. Yeah. Like, I love the, 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 the one thing I will say, the, the attention, the attention to detail on these models is fantastic. Wow, they give you a lot of stuff. Get some uh, neat little, sadly I'm not, oh, actually, one of the uh, cooler I thought it was really neat that these guys made an appearance. For anyone who uh, is a fan of Ghostbusters 2, you remember the Scolari brothers? brothers. 
from uh, one of the best scenes in the movie, in my opinion, is when they first strap on the proton packs again. And you get that uh, wonderful line given out by the late, great Harold Ramis when they're doing the Do, Re, Egon. Mm -hmm. Nice translucent purple. Kind of reminds me of, uh, kind of going back on my Cthulhu War statement, kind of reminds me of monsters in my pocket. <laughs> okay. But cool detail. Uh, Shining, Shoning's style, again, apologies if I'm getting that name wrong. Uh, his style translates extremely well to the uh, more cartoonish appeal of the, car of the figures. So we got some monsters, and then we got, of course, game would be complete. Ghosts. Can't bust. Can't feel good if you don't bust ghosts. Though that might actually have to wait a second, because I just found, uh... This thing is, uh... <laughs> Massive. Yeah, this is insane. If you remember, once again, going back to, uh... The movie, definitely taking some re references here. The uh, art museum where Vigo the Carpathian basically holed up encased in slime to prevent anyone from getting in. You actually get that in a model form, which is grossly detailed. It's two pieces. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Now, I don't know if it's. Go like that, yeah. Ah, silly me. So it looks like you can actually. Neat. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, this is actually, this rivals the Cthulhu Wars figures in terms of sheer size. So, it looks like you can have some objectives. Be a good way to fasten those I, probably. I mean, I'm not even really trying that hard. I don't want to, because we got a lot to go through here. Another great miniature. Love the detail on the ghost face and everything. Uh, speaking of Vigo the Carpathian, here he is. Vigo! He's downright terrifying. Yeah, yeah. He like said, guy knows how to draw, and he did a very... Now, how do you feel about painting board game miniatures? It's funny you should mention that, because I'm not... Uh, that's because I'm still getting better at painting. Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable doing that yet, because I do want to actually paint my rum and bones miniatures. But they actually released resin, uh, one of the Kickstarter options, and I think something you can actually buy separately from Cryptozoic is... They released resin versions of the original game pieces. Okay. So for people who want to paint and want something, I mean, of course you can paint these, but I guess the resin ones were meant to be more for, hey, if you really want to paint and you want it to look like legit, we offer these. Okay. Whether that's, you know, kind of a silly option or not, it's kind of cool that, you know, they kind of figured, hey, people are probably going to want to paint these. Now, I'd like to see how tall Vigo is compared to, say, Venkman. Let's, uh, well, we'll get to the ghosts soon because, oh, wait a minute. This one you'll probably get a kick out of. We haven't seen Janos yet, but we do oh. have Janos. Oh, the Janos ghost. Is the the Janos woman. ghost. As the crazy old woman that scared the crap out of millions of children in the 80s, 90s, 90s. Uh, I don't know if he has a baby carriage with him, but, uh, <laughs> that part scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah. <laughs> and I just love it. So I hope we get a regular Janos variant. The problem is, if he's on the board, I'm going to have a hard time not talking like that. Sure. <laughs> oh, going back. Yeah, this was the little tiny, got a couple of these guys, standard ghost. I'm sure we're going to get all those in the um, box and everything as far as details on them go. Uh, once again, I love the use of the translucent, you know, plastic. Gives them that nice ghostly look. Got a bunch of those little guys. Uh... And they really upped the scale on these. This one's a little warped, but just the base. I believe this is actually the ghost that appears in Times Square. Not Times Square. Um, hold on. They mentioned it. Uh, it's on the back here. Where is it? The Washington Square ghost. The Washington Square ghost, yes. <clears throat> he uh, appears very briefly <laughs> as one of the more expensive props in the movie, I'm sure. One of the most expensive effects, but it's the giant yellowish monster stomping through Times Square is kind of looming over everyone. Really really showing their credibility to using every conceivable one-off or 
anything anything that appeared in that movie, it mm -hmm. seems like it's going to be in there. That thing looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to deal with. Another, what's this? Uh, Throne of Slime. Not exactly 100% sure. I do like how in the back of the box they do uh, label, that is uh, Megaplasm. Megaplasm. Yeah, and this big one is called Gigaplasm. <laughs> There's also three grand plasms in there somewhere. And, uh, oh, this actually, because I got the deluxe edition, this actually comes with the Lewis Tully Plasm Phenomenon expansion, which was one of the separate expansions, because they actually made some expansions for separate characters, because uh, one of the Ghostbusters you, of course, get to play as, and this is Lewis Tully, mm -hmm. the, uh, played by Rick Moranis, the accountant. Mm -hmm. And in the second movie, he gets a chance to be a Ghostbuster. Um, and they actually have an expansion where Slimer is the hero. Nice. Which I do want to get, because uh, who doesn't love Slimer? As a fan of the real Ghostbusters. I mean, I was okay with Slimer becoming the mascot. I, I had no problems with that. The uh, as uh, Who said it on the set of Ghostbusters? Someone said that's the ghost. Dan Aykroyd, I believe, stated that was the ghost, ghost of John, John Belushi. Belushi. Yeah. yeah, which I could see. Special dice, kind of neat little different color variations. You got um, some nice D6s with the Ghostbusters logo on it. Um... And of course, you have because you have the chaos die, which determines the ghost, and you have the d. Is that a d4? D8. 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 The uh, d8 that determines you know where the ghosts move, how they move, because every ghost has a certain particular pattern. Um, these rings, I'm assuming, are to help dictate who's shooting at what, because some ghosts require more than one proton beam to really take them down. So cool. I mean, already I'm kind of really itching to play this because it looks like a lot of fun. And I do love the fact that they're adding more. Oh, and the theater ghost. Another one of the one-off ghosts that kind of just appears during all the chaos in the um, in Ghostbusters 2. Because they actually made the taxi drivers from the first one. I was going to ask about that. They, um, I have the, uh, I got the impossible mode ones. Uh, as a bonus for contributing to the first one. And actually, there's one particular model in here I think you're going to get a real kick out of. Yep. Uh, I can't wait till we pull it out. I think you know what it is, but I, I, I we'll find out. Uh, so, let's get more and more. So, now we're going to move on to the next. Is it the Titanic? Yes, it's the Titanic ghost. I love the fact that they actually put them in there. Better late than never. <laughs> Another one of those lines that just makes me wonder how anybody could not... At least enjoy that movie on some level. Yes, one of the newer... Well, let's see if Mike's opening that. Oh, and actually, something you didn't get out of the first game. Get your own little model of the Ecto-1. Because in the first one, it was a chit. Correct? It was a chit. I actually used the Hot Wheels. Because <laughs> I was not about to... I was not about to not have an actual scale model uh, Ecto-1 on the field. Uh... But you get a nicely detailed Ecto-1. I'm sure painters will really appreciate that. It's even got some of the goo on it and some of the extra accoutrements on top. Very nice. Some more creepy-looking ghosts. What are these guys? More models need to do this, especially when they have so much. Uh, hmm. Actually, that does not appear to be on the back. Well, we'll figure that out later. Well, now we can get to the actual heroes here. Lewis Tully with his slime blower and also the proton pack variant because each model is... Oh, and what's the comparison between them and Vigo? Oh, yeah, we're going to do that because uh, here you wanted uh, Venkman, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, just as an example. Well, yeah, but I mean, so here's uh, Peter Venkman. Yep. It's cool because you actually get their courtroom appearances as well. <laughs> you do get them in their suits from their uh, ill-fated courtroom appearance where they end up taking down the Scolari brothers. And I think that's a pretty apt comparison between the two of them. Vigo was a very imposing, you know, terrifying being, even though Venkman wouldn't be damned to respond to that. I mean, he, called, he said he was a bad monkey and called him a, a blonde bimba with the baby. Doesn't have brain one in that big melon. So, 
This is, I got this is, uh, see, that's the thing. As much as I, like, didn't get super into the first game, it's hard for me to be mad about it, because Ghostbusters is one of those things that's just really special to me. I know I was not one of the people on the internet attacking anyone but the new movie. I just, I went about my business. I had nothing to say. <laughs> and here we go. The Titanic Ghosts. In all their glory, you get five of them. So, uh, another great scene from the movie during all the chaos from that all, uh... Cheech Marin. Yeah, with Cheech Marin delivering that one great line. Better late than never, because Titanic finally comes. The Titanic finally arrives at port. Whoever wrote that, uh, that, was, that was a genius move on their part. Of course, we got all the rest of the Ghostbusters. Sorry, there's... Much like Cthulhu Wars, if you remember that unboxing, we have a lot of different... I do like how Lewis Tully's model has the earmuffs. He never he never went out without them. Well, sure. <laughs> so you got some great variations here. You got Venkman, you got Zetamore, you've got all of them, and you got the different variants with the slime blowers, proton packs, everything. Because that's, like I said, that's going to be kind of a major change because actually the character cards are double-sided one side to represent the uh, sorry right one side to represent the okay, sorry. <laughs> Pull that up. one side to represent their uh, proton pack variant and then let me uh, snip this up and the other side is going to represent the uh, slime blower and I think that's going to really give this game kind of the shot in the arm that it needed. Because the first game, while fun, kind of became sort of the same thing. A little bit. I mean, it's still fun. Especially if you have the Ghostbusters theme on repeat. <laughs> I do like that the game came with many, many scenarios. And it looks like this one does as well. Yep, you got the Scolari Brothers. The Scolari Brothers have their own campaign. Okay, so hold on. Let's... Stat cards for all the ghosts. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you got. Oh wait a minute! Do you not get the? Oh, they're actually just all on the. They're not double sided. They're actually just all on the front. The other side of it is the story of the. Person. Yeah, the character ability and clarification for the character ability. You even get the nice little. Nice attention to detail. Once again, loving that comic book art style that. IDW has been doing well. Got all your scenario cards, uh, how to assemble your maps, the objectives, um, and then of course you have your ghost stat cards. These are going to dictate how they move. And I really—that's one thing I really loved because I'm a big—I'm a big geek for stuff like this when they really kind of go into like the history of the character. But I love how they give you full details and even tips now on how to deal with the different ghosts. And you of course get that great artwork there and how they work. So it looks like rules clarification was a big thing that they tried to kind of fix, which is great, because the first game, I'll admit there were a few times that I got a little confused as far as it goes, but then again, I've never been necessarily good at following or reading rules. <laughs> um, one thing that they've added in this time around is equipment. Yes, this was something I was very excited to see because I saw some people on Board Game Geek looking to do their own variant on this, and uh, apologies, we'll get back to the miniatures soon. We'll have them all nice and neatly laid out because there's a ton to go through. And they're all kind of smaller compared to the Cthulhu Wars because uh, this game looks like it added a lot more. <laughs> but you actually get equipment now. So it looks like you can actually sort of upgrade. And if you remember the old Ghostbusters NES game or the Atari or whichever version, sure, not a fantastic game, but one of the key components of that game was buying and upgrading equipment. Because the Ghostbusters were always bereft of money. Uh, if you remember in the first movie, the Chinese food they had was that sumptuous banquet was the last of their petty cash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I also, uh, speaking of the old video game, my favorite part was when on the driving levels, you'd run out of gas and they'd have to get out and push it. I mean, you know, they were working class heroes. Yeah. That's, where, that's why Winston Zedmore was one of my favorite, like, probably next to Dan Aykroyd's uh, Raymond Stans, one of my favorites. Because I just like that whole. He'll believe whatever you need to. So these class S ones. I'm going to assume. 
Yeah, we'll have to look into these, but oh, you get the ghost it's bomb. At level five, the character gets their. Oh, class everyone has their own particular one. Or it's, it's, it's a different type. So Winston Zedemore gets a class S trap card. So. Bankman gets a weapon card. Uh, Egon gets a utility card. And Ray gets a tome. Yeah, so he raced the Raymond Stands. I don't know if he's the kind of guy you want to have the Necronomicon, but he can get that. You can also get the Codex of St. The Theophilus. I, I would trust him. I would. I just, you know, I mean, this is the guy who, unfortunately, when he had to clear his head, he inadvertently summoned the Destroyer in the form of the Stay, Push, Stay Puff Marshmallow That's Man. That's fair, but he did go on to own an occult bookstore. He, he I did. I feel like he would treat it with the respect it deserves. And he did. Actually, uh, one of his, uh, his, one of his employees, actually, in the comic books, uh, Kylie Griffin, she becomes... A ghost, but she becomes a new add-on to the Ghostbusters team because she works at Ray's Occult Books, and she was actually one of the characters in the first game. And speaking of which, it's one thing I do hope that they do is that they add it to where you can use the old components with the new game. Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping that they have something like that. Cause How big of a difference is this new one mechanically? Have you I into it. Uh, it seems like the equipment cards and the slime blower. Well, I mean, we'll be playing it later, obviously. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to, but it's a, I don't know actually. I haven't really gotten a compare. Like I said, this was a surprise to me. I was not expecting to get this, but I'm really excited about the equipment cards. Looks like now you get event cards where... The names of some of those event cards are great. The Pied Piper of Manhattan, Mood Slime, so funky. What I saw in there was Apocalypse What Now? That's the name of one of the real Ghostbusters episodes. All right, this game already has me uh, Plasm Spasm. I enjoy that. Baby Spookums. Oh, that's... Again, as a big fan of the uh, real Ghostbusters cartoon... In that, that is hilarious. Uh, so the event cards look like they add yet another wrinkle to the. Um, looks like they give you an objective, and you have you have to complete it in a certain amount of time. All right. Then you have the goo pile cards, ah. which, if you look on the other side, is telling you to draw an event or an equipment card. So it's stuff you're finding in the goo. Okay, and and then there's the key items as well. So you got a, the slime power toaster. <laughs> Which those are, and this is just a guess, yeah. likely things that you need to find through the course of a well, yeah. that's mixed in with... The old slime, the old uh, possessed to finger, uh, the old finger bitten off by the possessed toaster trick. Mm -hmm. Gets them every time. I'm sure I butchered that line, but... <laughs> Can't commit everything to 100% perfect memory. All right. Um, and actually... I did get some bonus stuff in here, even though I didn't get my expansions yet. The uh, real Ghostbusters expansion in particular. So, it's, it's love that the Statue of Liberty head is... Actually, while I do that, I'll place down some of these other little guys for you. They do all have their names and their stats. While you're getting those set up, I'm going to read off, because this is one of my favorite things in here. Um, some of the names of the items, particularly the tomes. They're things that are mentioned throughout the movies. So do they have Tobin? Do they have Tobin's spirit guide? Well, we have magicians, martyrs, and madmen. Okay, all right. We've got magical paths to fortune and power. Check the tree. We have. Let's see. Uh, does it come with the Jackie Wilson? Well, I suggested I that uh, if you were here at the beginning of the video, or if you rewind when this is done, I did. Mention how it, when you begin to pilot the Statue of Liberty with your Ghostbusters, it is highly recommended to have the Ghostbusters soundtrack for the second movie. Uh, great soundtrack, by the way. Playing, because um, actually, funny fact, the song that was playing during the Statue of Liberty scene was not the original Jackie Wilson version. It was a updated version done by uh, Howard Huntsbury. Uh, it's actually a really great version. The more you know, Mark. I mean, you if you if you couldn't tell, I I, I kind of <laughs> I kind of really kind of like Ghostbusters a bit. Let's see, we have the Nameless Book, The End of the World by Milton Englund, who was the uh, guest on Bankman's talk show in the beginning of the second movie. See, I love all the deep references that they keep giving. Spade's Catalog of Nameless Horrors. Nice, nice. Lockmore's uh, Guide to the Lower Regions. Uh, no Tobin Spirit Guide. Well, that was actually uh, in the first game. That was actually the uh, box that they gave you. To hold all of your uh, stuff. Got it. So maybe that's why. Uh, so this is actually really neat. We get some more miniatures in Can here. Can we get a quick shot of Vigo? Oh, actually, uh, you're going to get a better Vigo because uh, one of the little extra expansions that they gave me here 
not only do you get another Vigo, you actually get the portrait itself, surrounded by a throne of skulls. And it looks like there's actually uh, a cutout or something you put back there. So you get Vigo, and another Vigo. But you get this Vigo, those Vigos, with the surrounding skulls and the slit, slit up top so you can actually put, like, uh, I believe, you can put the Burt Reynolds on the bearskin rug back there if you wish. Sure. I mean, there's nothing sure, wrong they're with both, that. both very dark images. <laughs> can I see the, the chips? See if I can... And actually, I'm going to just take one of these. Uh, one of the bigger complaints I did have about the first game, you didn't get trap chits. Tokens. That has been remedied. Uh, I still actually have my <laughs> toy Ghostbusters <laughs> trap. Sadly, the little foot pump that you would step on to open it is no longer working. But it's still great for... Uh, <laughs> See, Brian gets Brian gets my love of Ghostbusters too. I don't care what anyone says about it. Like, oh, Bill Murray didn't look like he was having fun in the movie. That adds to it, though. <laughs> He's still funnier than most people. So you get some great little extra add-ons. Can I see the, uh, the chits there? Uh, oh, these chits. Let's see right. if I can find a uh, something to a Vigo. Back. A Vigo. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Not the same abundance of stuff that you got out of Cthulhu Wars, but the quality is still there. Uh, this box feels a little bit heavier because, a little funny fact, um, this box is what had Vigo and the uh, trap chits, or the trap miniatures in it. This box. Nice. That box. <laughs> so. That's all that was in there? That's all that was in there. And, uh, oh, a foam, a piece of foam. So, I mean, if you're desperate for foam, there's a bonus one. It's all hail foam. Oh, uh, this is the one that I actually peeked into. Okay. Ooh, this one looks a little more substantial. Whoa. Okay. What do we, what do we have here? Uh, you have a slime-covered uh, extra add-on map. Also a... Looks to be an outdoor? Or? Oh, we'll investigate that more. But you actually get, similar to how in the previous game they had a container with Tobin Spirit Guides, you get Royal Ant's Guide to Secret Societies and Sex. Sex, not sex. <laughs> and we actually got some more... Oh, uh, not sure how many people felt about it, but in the 90s there was actually another Ghostbusters cartoon called The Extreme Ghostbusters. Sure, sure. It got a lot of hate, even though it didn't deserve it, because it wasn't that bad, actually, and it was... It was very inclusive. It came on the Force of Evolution. Did it? Yeah. Man, I'm surprised I don't know that. At least some point. Sometimes okay. it did. Uh, it wasn't even the fact that it was all inclusive. It was more so, I like the fact that it actually, Egon was training new Ghostbusters, which I felt is what the third movie should be. And it was cool that you got... You had a guy in a wheelchair, like an athletic guy in a wheelchair who was not, he was, he was like, and you had, of course, the slacker, and then you had, um... Just like kind of like a goth chick, right? Kind of, yeah, but it, I actually watched a few episodes of the show, and you know what? It does not deserve any of the hate that it got, and I think it's great. So now you have, in compare, combined with the original game, you now have the Extreme Ghostbusters, we'll have the real Ghostbusters too, soon, you have... The alternate Ghostbusters from the comic books, the secondary group, and the core group. So it looks like you have a lot of options for characters now. I want but a monkey. Where is that? Monkey. There's a monkey Ghostbuster. There's a monkey Ghostbuster? <laughs> How do I not know about that? She's talking about I'm that talking about the stupid Oh, oh, <laughs> the, the other Ghostbusters, the one done by Funimation, I believe. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's more like Scooby-Doo. Big gorilla. <laughs> yeah, Gorilla Kong and the, yeah, oh yeah, you know, that was a live action show before it was a cartoon. What? Oh, look it up. It looks terrifying. <laughs> they should actually then uh, try to get the rights to that so they can add that in this game just because. I would, I would get it. Uh, and actually, going on the cartoon, this is kind of funny because one of my favorite episodes of the cartoon was uh, called, I believe, the Grundle. Okay. It was about this weird ghost, like this creepy looking ghost that kind of looked like the creeper from uh, Jeepers Creepers a bit. Yeah. I mean, obviously it might have been reversed. Hey, how you doing? It basically would uh, trick this kid, it would basically help manipulate this kid into being a jerk. I believe it was called the Grundle, I could be wrong, but it was a really, really good episode because one of the ways I learned about the real Ghostbusters and I love the show is we used to have old VHS tapes in my house just recorded with cartoons for hours upon hours. Mm -hmm. And this was one of the episodes on it and I'd watch it over and over again. I remember watching that on Saturday morning. 
You also get some more ghosts. Uh, ooh, these are some pretty... You know what one I really like? There was one where I believe it was Ray and Bacon were both possessed. And they were out in like, the cabin and like, the demons hated each other. I do, I do slightly remember that one. That sounds hilarious. Oh, there was some great... There was an episode that completely parodied The Simpsons. The ghosts were basically like a grotesque version of The Simpsons. Huh. Wow, I don't know who this lady is, but she looks really familiar and genuinely terrifying because she has a child trapped within her. Hold on, we gotta... You know what, we probably have the information with the ghost, because we also have... I think I actually still have the figure of one of these guys. Never have enough ghosts. Do these glow in the dark? I don't know if they do, <laughs> but man. Okay, so let's um, let's open up this Roylance guide. Try the scissors, please. <laughs> we'll be here all day. <laughs> you saw how much I struggled with the magic opener. Be fair, Michelle. That was a gorilla, not a monkey. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I remember. Uh, I remember when they had that. Uh, what was it? The Cubo Channel or whatever? Or? Yeah, uh, the hub. No, it was no, it was another channel because we'd why because they always had on Masters of the Universe, oh, GI yeah. Joe, and it was always on at midnight because they knew weirdos like me were still up and was like, yeah, you know what I want to watch? Old eighties cartoons. Because wasn't Brave Star on there? Brave Star was good. Yeah, that was <laughs> I actually, I actually kind of liked that show. When's that? Get, when's that getting a board game? So that's what I watched. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I remember the one time we were watching He Man and Shauna was really angry because uh, Skeletor wasn't even the villain. Seriously, like everybody... it was some wizard with like really big teeth. And then the one time we watched GI Joe, the only real GI Joes on there was like Shipwreck. <laughs> hey, Shipwreck is. It was all seedless GI Joes. Tom Max and Zamat were there though. I know. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I think actually before one of our trips we got caught up watching Rise or Pentora Rise. Yeah. Apologize if there was any um, problems or lags with the stream. It looks like we have that straightened out now. Oh, sorry about that. Feel free to please re-watch the video. We appreciate it. Sorry, I'm still futzing about. They don't make this very easy to open. Um, you do get another book in the Roiland's Sex Guide. Um, sext. Sorry. Incantator Incantatoribus. <laughs> so here, uh, Mike, you might be a little more a little more uh, adequate than I am at opening that. So I'm not seeing anything yet for uh, stuff to put in Vigo's portrait there, but nothing a little nothing a little print printer can't um, fix. I do like when they always include these because, as I said in the first game, they included Tobin's spirit guide as a storage box. And I, I mean, that's one thing. I know Cryptozoic has kind of a weird track record with a lot of their games. Like, I, I actually enjoy the DC deck builder. I know some people don't. But, um... Ray's Occult Bookshop Catalog. All right, all right. Photon Pack Mark II, Box of Yellow Snack Cakes. Ah, hold on, let me see. That's a big Twinkie. Another event card, it looks like. Oh, because Bok, Bok, Bok? yeah, because you have wear chickens. All right. That's one of the new models you have. All right. You got three wear chickens. Ooh, popular fungus. <laughs> Do they have a straightened out Slinky? Golden Big trouble. You didn't get this from me. So a few new class S rooms. I guess they couldn't get the uh, rights to have Hostess uh, put their, let them use the word Twinkie. Hi there. Hi. My name's Steven. Hi, nice to meet you. Mike, uh, does anybody ever play Empires in Arms? Mm, I haven't had anybody come in here with that one, now. Okay. It's a rather long game. Okay. Hold on one second, folks. Oh. I just thought I would ask. Oh, where they did the parody of Wolf, yeah. but with Chicken, with Jack Nicholson? 
don't be scared. Why would I be scared? You're a big chicken. Just for that, I'm gonna peck up your wall. <laughs> Cluck cock a doodle do, baby. <laughs> Alright, we got some more some more ghost cards. Mike had to take care of something, so bear with me here as I try to do both. You get the uh, grabber ghost. Uh, you get the character cards for the extreme Ghostbusters. Uh, Roland, Eduardo, Kylie, and uh, Garrett. So, even more characters to choose from. They don't seem to have slime blowers, which makes sense because they didn't really... They had different equipment. Neat though. Killer Watt. Oh, he was another ghost from that. You get the Orphan Ghost. Jeez. The Grundle. Okay, I was right. I wasn't just making up words, and it looks like it has an ability. You also get campaigns for the new ghosts, such as the Grundle, the Killer Watt. <laughs> a nice reference to Back to the Future with one of the titles. Man. So they definitely did not skimp. Keep in mind, I still have more coming. So, in the meantime, when Mike gets back, I'll lay down some more of these gorgeous miniatures that they've. Uh, Show me around a little bit if you don't mind. Got some really fun miniatures. So. Wow. All right. So, well, since we're kind of winding down here, hopefully we'll get to do a review of this once we get the playthrough going. Uh, so yeah, this is Ghostbusters 2, the Deluxe Edition. This was everything I got in my box thus far. As you can see, they did not skimp on the sheer quantity. Um, I'm hoping that this game is cross-compatible with... Oh, not the Statue of Liberty's heads off there. Hoping the game is cross-compatible with the old game. I'd be surprised if not, because I would love to be able to use... I would love to be able to use the old game, and I don't think it would be that hard to adapt the old characters into the new game. So, yeah, I guess we'll just kind of cut it from there, because we're starting to... We do have Pokemon starting shortly, so for anyone out there who's in the area looking to partake, Pokemon will be starting in a few minutes, and uh, I will see you all later. Sorry to cut it short. Be sure to look forward to our review of Ghostbusters 2, hopefully soon.